Evacuating from an aircraft can be a frightening experience, and even a dangerous one, especially if the aircraft catches on fire. But sometimes things go well, and everybody gets out okay. Hello, and welcome to The Conversation at Airsafe.com. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Curtis, the director of the Airsafe.com Foundation, and the creator of Airsafe.com, your reliable source of airline safety and security information since 1996. This conversation will focus on evacuation issues, specifically lessons learned from the crash of an Air France A340 in Toronto, Canada in August of 2005. Following the overview of this accident, there will be a discussion of evacuation issues, a review of past research on evacuation, and specific passenger recommendations for every flight and especially for flights where there may be an emergency landing and an emergency evacuation. Let's start with an overview of this accident. On August 2, 2005, an Air France A340 was on a flight from Paris to Toronto. For a variety of reasons, partly due to the environmental conditions and partly due to crew actions, the aircraft ran off the runway, crossed a road, stopped in a ravine where it caught fire. Many of the exits were damaged or unusable, but in spite of that, all of the occupants of the aircraft were able to escape and no one was killed. Because the accident occurred in Canada, the investigation was conducted by the Transportation Safety Board of Canada. In addition to a very extensive written report, there are also a couple of video simulations of the final stages of the flight. Because all of the data in the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder were usable, there was quite a bit of information about the characteristics of this flight and about the situation this aircraft was in. The key circumstances of this accident were rapidly changing weather with a condition of severe thunderstorms, heavy rain, and lightning, as well as significant tailwinds, which led in part to the aircraft not being able to stop on the runway. Also, beyond the end of the runway, there was sloping terrain and obstructions, which led to severe aircraft damage, including damage that led to a post-crash fire. Although airport fire crews arrived on the scene quickly, most of the passenger cabin and other parts of the aircraft were destroyed by the fire. Although the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder were damaged in the accident, the data was intact. The quality of the data allowed the investigating authorities to have a very complete picture of what went on. From the data, it was clear that several miles from the runway, the aircraft was on autopilot in a stabilized landing configuration and flying along the glide slope. However, about 35 seconds before landing, the crew, sensing there might be a wind shear condition, decided to disconnect the autopilot and fly manually. One of the things they did was increase the thrust on the engines. As a result of the increased thrust, the aircraft sped up and started to fly above the glide slope. Around this time the wind shifted direction. While there was still a crosswind condition, there was also a tailwind condition. These three factors, increased speed, flying above the glide slope, and having a tailwind condition, were major contributors to what happened next. Rather than landing at the normal touchdown point of about a thousand feet beyond the threshold of the 9,000 foot runway, the aircraft actually touched down about 3,800 feet down the runway. Although the brakes and thrust reversers were fully engaged, the aircraft ended up running off the end of the runway at about 86 knots, or 99 miles an hour, and came to rest in a ravine several seconds later after running over a road through a guardrail and other obstructions. Things began happening rather quickly after this. Because of damage sustained by the aircraft, it caught fire. Also, there was damage to the electrical system, so the cabin crew was unable to communicate to the passengers effectively. Although fire crews were there very quickly after the aircraft came to a stop, the fire eventually destroyed the entire cabin and other parts of the aircraft as well. Fortunately, all the passengers were able to get out. The investigating authorities concluded that crew actions due to wind shear concerns affected the landing, that the aircraft touched down long due to its speed and to reduce visibility, which made it hard for the crew to figure out exactly where they were relative to the runway. Water on the runway and the tailwind situation put the aircraft over the landing limits with respect to being able to stop fully on the runway. The tailwind condition left the crew no margin for error when it came to the landing distance available to the aircraft. Also, it was found that the use of brakes and thrust reversers were delayed, and the crew's flight plan did not include computing landing distances for the circumstances they encountered. It was clear there was a thunderstorm present at Toronto during the landing. In fact, there were multiple lightning strikes happening all around the aircraft as it landed. The investigating authorities didn't fault the crew for deciding to land during a thunderstorm, since landing in these conditions is standard industry practice. 
Also, there is no indication that the aircraft was affected by wind shear or struck by lightning during the landing. The major findings was that there was a combination of factors involved. Visibility, crew planning, crew decisions, and weather were all major factors. Passenger actions delayed evacuation, but apparently these actions did not contribute to the injuries that occurred during the evacuation. I'd like to go back a bit and explain a concept mentioned earlier. Wind shear is defined as a sudden and dramatic change in wind speed or direction over a small area. Because of the danger this poses to the aircraft, there are specific procedures pilots take when encountering wind shear conditions. And once again, during the investigation, the authorities did not see any evidence that there was in fact a wind shear condition during this landing. When we come back, we'll talk about the evacuation aspects of this crash, as well as insights about evacuations gained over the years through research and observation.